Hello, everyone. I'm Wang Wu Wang from the University of Surrey. It's my great pleasure to present our recent work on deep learning for automated audio captioning. This is a joint work with my PhD student, Qing Hao Mei and Xu Bo Liu, funded by British Council and the Newton Fund Institutional Links Award. I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to speak here. So this is the outline of my talk. I will start with a brief introduction about the problem and some existing work in this area. Then we will discuss our recent contributions on using contrastive learning for audio captioning and the audio captioning transformers and the diverse issues in audio captioning. Finally, we will conclude and discuss future work. Here's the introduction. So what is uh, automated audio captioning? So automated audio captioning is a cross-model translation task which aims at generating a natural language description for a given audio clip. So this task requires detecting the audio events and their special temporal relationships and describe this information using natural language. So this problem can find in a number of applications. For example, in audio retrieval, using the captions, we can potentially find more precisely the audio clips in the audio archive. We could also use the audio captioning to assist the hearing impaired or deaf people to understand your mental sound. We could also use audio captioning to generate subtitles for sound in TV programs. So this problem has been studied since 2017, especially in the past two years, since the release of the dataset in the DK's challenges. 2020 and 2021. So in the existing systems, the encoder and the decoder framework is often used where the encoder takes the audio signal as input and then generates the audio features. The audio features are then passed through this decoder to generate the captions. So for the encoder, the popular frameworks include recurrent neural networks, convolutional neural network, convolutional recurrent neural networks, or transformer. And for the decoder, the popular architectures include recurrent neural networks or transformer. So in terms of training, the most popular methods are based on cross entropy training with maximum accurate estimation. However, this technique is known to, uh, to have limitations in exposure bias. So to address this limitation, we could use this reinforcement learning to directly optimize the performance metrics related to audio captioning. So other works including introducing auxiliary information into the audio captioning system. For example, by introducing keywords or tag information or sentence information into the captioning system. We could also use the pre-trained models for encoder or decoder to enhance the captioning performance. And finally, we could also use data augmentation to enhance the performance of the system when the data available is very limited. There are four datasets currently available for developing such systems. Uh, two most popular um, datasets are the CLOSO and the audio caps. CLOSO is a dataset where the audio clips are collected from the free sound database. So each audio clips has five reference captions uh, between 15 
to 30 seconds long. So the cursor is used in the decades channels for ranking the different captioning systems. Audio caps is the largest audio captioning data set, which contains 5,000, 50,000 um, 10 second audio clips sourced from audio set. So in a training set, each audio clip has one reference caption, while in the validation set, in the test set, each audio clip has five reference captions. So these are the two data sets are less used in the literature. The performance metrics used for evaluating audio captioning systems are largely borrowed from natural language processing tasks and the image captioning tasks. For example, blue is captioned as a weighted geometric mean of modified precision of n grams. Here, n grams means that n consecutive words. Basically, these uh, metrics try to uh, find the similarity between the generated caption and the ground truth caption by comparing the n consecutive words in these two captions. So other metrics include CIDR, which applies term frequency words document frequency weights to n grams, and then calculates the cosine similarity between them. SPICE, which transforms captions into scene graphs, and then calculates F-score based on tuples in them. So the spider is a linear combination of cider and spice, where the spice uh, score ensures captions are semantically faithful to the uh, original audio clips. And while the cider score ensures captions are syntactically fluent. However, there are several um, open problems in this area. One is the data scarcity. Uh, where data available are very limited, and especially the number of uh, training examples in the data sets is limited. To mitigate this problem, we propose a solution in using contrastive learning to improve the performance when the data is relatively small. The other problem is uh, learning representations for audio and the text data. So here we develop a solution using transformer model. And uh, another problem is uh, the diversity issue in captions. The current system often generates captions uh, you know, with simple grammars. So it's a simple and det deterministic captions. So here we present uh, new contributions uh, in terms of promoting diversity in audio captioning. To start with, we discuss contrastive learning for audio captioning. So the motivation behind this is the data scarcity problem, as we discussed. The, the training data are often limited in terms of the number of audio clips. For example, in CLOSO, we two data sets we only have about 5,900 audio clips. So to address this problem, we could use techniques such as data augmentation by generating uh, more uh, training data based on existing training data by mixing up, for example. We could also use transfer learning techniques where we can pre-train a model using a large scale data sets for weekly label learning, such as for audio tagging, or for other tasks. Uh, here, we propose a new method based on contrastive learning, where we use self-supervision signals derived from limited training data to exploit the audio text correspondences. So in this case, we do not need to use external data sets. So the idea here is we generate unpaired captions. So given the audio clip A, we are generating unpaired captions um, based on the ground truth captions. 
So the unpaired captions can, can be considered as uh, collective samples. So the aim is to design contrastive learning objective to maximize the difference between the representation of the matched audio caption pair and those from the negative pairs. Here is the uh, illustration. Um, here, the circle shows the representation of the paired audio text data. The triangle here represents the uh, unpaired audio text data. So the learning objective for contrastive learning is to maximize the difference between this representation of the paired audio text data and the representation of the unpaired audio text data, which are negative samples. So to do this, based on a baseline system uh, using CNN pens encoder and transformer decoder. So we take the uh, audio input here is a nightmare spectrogram. There's a time frequency representation of the original audio clips. And then we generate the audio features by using the encoder. And the audio features together with audio captions are passed into the transformer decoder to generate the high level representations of uh, audio and text. And finally, we can predict the audio captions and then compare with the ground truth audio caption and the backbone with the errors. So this is the baseline system. Here, we're using this uh, last vector from this uh, audio text representation and then pass through a classifier. Uh, the classifier is used to predict whether the input audio and the caption are paired. And this is uh, then passed into the training laws of the conventional captioning system, which is the cross entropy laws. So finally, we have this joint uh, training objective based on the cross entropy laws and the contrastive learning laws. So we compared this proposed method against two baselines. One is the baseline system, uh, similar to our uh, system we submitted to the DKS Challenge 2021. So without using uh, reinforcement learning. So the second system is based on this baseline system. We train, pre-train this system on audio caps uh, and then train on a closer training set. So here we can see that the proposed system performs better than the two baseline system in terms of the scores like blue, cider, and spider. So this shows that the contrastive learning based system can mitigate the data scarcity problem without introducing external data sets. So next we discuss uh, transformer based audio captioning. So the motivation here is that in the existing system where CN convolutional neural network used in the encoder. So the CN encoder can be limited uh, to modeling temporary information for audio signals because audio signals is time series signal. And uh, the recurrent neural network encoder can be limited at modeling long range dependencies between the time frames. However, the transformer has been shown to be very powerful at modeling sequence data in natural language tasks. So here we propose the uh, audio captioning transformer where both the encoder and the decoder are based on transformers. So here's the diagram of our proposed system. So where this is the encoder. So the encoder uh, takes the audio waveform as the input and converts it into log mirror spectrogram, which is the time frequency representation of the audio signals, and then segment into patches, non-overlapping patches. These are then nearly mapped to these tokens. 
including the cost tokens. And these uh, information are then passed through these uh, blocks, transformer blocks. We have NE transformer blocks, uh, is a, uh, identical blocks. And after these blocks, the input audio is converted into uh, audio features. So in a decoder, the decoder takes the audio features as well as the um, features from uh, the captions. So basically the captions are first converted into embeddings using a model called word embedding layer. Uh, this actually converts the captions into fixed length vectors. And these vectors are then uh, turned into um, abstract information uh, using this uh, self attention layer. And this information are then combined with uh, uh, audio features um, by this uh, cross attention module. This cross attention module is used to um, to find the relationship between the audio features and the audio captioning. So this I actually then pass through uh, to uh, to the linear and soft path layer to predict the probabilities of each word uh, in the vocabulary. So basically we find the probabilities of occurrence of each word in the uh, vocabulary. So that gives us the captions for the audio clip. So to improve the performance, we have uh, used this uh, uh, pre-training process uh, to improve the audio encoder. So basically what we did is we used the uh, audio sets as the training data. Audio set was originally proposed for uh, developing the audio tagging systems, where given the audio clips, um, the model is trained to predict the tags for the audio clips. So we use the audio set, which is a larger scale weekly label data, includes uh, more than two million uh, audio clips. So these audio clips are used to train this audio encoder, and then the parameters uh, optimized based on this uh, data set will be then passed through this uh, audio captioning system. So here are the performance. Uh, these three are the proposed model where we use date as the audio encoder. And then this is the uh, decoder. We use the three different decoders. Uh, basically, it's the, um, the transformer decoder uh, using different number of blocks of transformers, two, four, and six blocks. So from this result, we can see that the three different decoders achieve very similar performance. And using pre-trained uh, encoder, the, the performance of the captioning system improves significantly. Now let's discuss uh, the diversity issue in audio captioning. So the motivation behind this is that different people may describe an audio clip from different uh, aspects using distinct word and grammars. An existing model tend to generate generic and simple and deterministic captions. So we argue that an audio caption system should have the ability to generate diverse captions for a fixed audio clip and across similar audio clips. For example, here we have some uh, captions generated by some subjects for the closer data set. So for the same audio clips, we can see that different subjects uh, may generate uh, different captions. Um, so which means that there's diversity in the captions generated by different uh, uh, subjects. But if we look at these captions generated by the existing audio captioning system, we found that these captions uh, are very simple 
and not uh, similar to each other. So which means that they are lacking diversity. So to address this problem, we propose an adversarial training framework for audio captioning based on conditional uh, generative adversarial network conditional GAN. So here is the generator. So basically we uh, take the log mirror spectrum as the input and we use this CNN as the encoder to generate the audio features. These audio features together with a random vector we generated and the ground truth of the audio captioning are used to generate the captions. So the idea here by using a randomized vector is to uh, in, improve the diversity of the captions generated. And the generator here is also monitoring three scores. One is uh, from the naturalness discriminator. Um, so the naturalness discriminator uh, takes the um, captions and try to identify whether the captions is human annotated or machine generated. And the language evaluator is trying to identify the um, scores, um, whether the captions is uh, grammatically correct. And uh, we have also this semantic evaluator, which gives a score um, how the caption is generated is relevant to, uh, semantically relevant to the uh, original audio clip. So in terms of the generator, um, basically we take the audio clips and we generate the audio features uh, using an encoder. And then these audio features are, are concatenated with a random vector sampled from a normal distribution and then fed into the transformer decoder. Um, so the transformer decoder uh, predict the word at time t based on the audio feature x and the random vector z together with the ground truth word uh, from the previous time step. So this is the generated uh, uh, auto regressively. So during the training, uh, the generator observed the three scores from the discriminator and the two evaluator based on different criteria and is trained to maximize these scores. So a caption is composed of uh, discrete tokens. Therefore, it is not feasible to make changes to the discrete output value with respect to the gradients back propagated from the discriminator. To address this issue, we employ reinforcement learning to update the parameters. So a little bit more details about the discriminator, evaluator, and uh, the language evaluator. So here, this is a discriminator. Um, so the the aim of the naturalist discriminator is to improve the naturalist of the generated captions. Basically, we take the caption, we try to find out whether the caption is human annotated or machine generated. So the semantic evaluator is uh, uh, aims to ensure the semantic relevance of the generated uh, caption with respect to the given audio clip. So this is a pre-trained using the ground truth caption and the audio clip, okay? And the frozen during the uh, adversarial training stage. So the language evaluator try to evaluate the performance metrics, for example, size uh, for the generated captions. And this is the aim to ensure the captions achieve high scores under this uh, objective mathematical metric metrics. Finally, we combine these three scores, naturalist score, uh, semantic score, and language score. And this is the final reward for the uh, reinforcement learning. In terms of the training process, um, we actually uh, pre-trained the generator for 25 epochs and the natural 
Uh, that means discriminator pre-trained for five echoes. Uh, this will provide correct guidance in the initial training stage of the gun. The semantic evaluator is pre-trained for 25 echoes and it's frozen during the uh, adversary training process. So in the adversary training stage, the generator and the natural, natural discriminator are trained jointly for 30 uh, epochs. So in terms of evaluation, we use both the conventional metrics like blue, cider, and the spider, as well as the diversity metrics, for example, vocabulary size, M blue, or uh, deep M. Here are the results. Um, you can see that our proposed system provides uh, better performance in terms of diversity, but slightly great in terms of the conventional performance metrics. Uh, so we can also see some examples. Here are the uh, captains generated by the proposed system. And here are the baseline system using the conventional body caption uh, thing and transformer architecture. We can see that the caption generated by our proposed system are more natural as compared with this um, conventional system. So here we have a uh, much better diversity as compared with the conventional systems. And to conclude, we have uh, discussed the three contributions um, where we found that introducing contrastive loss can help mitigate data scarcity uh, problem. And using pre-trained encoder, the caption performance can be improved significantly. And the proposed diverse captioning framework results in more diverse captions compared with these models trained with uh, maximum likelihood estimators. So the future work would include uh, further improving the captioning performance, for example, using pre-trained language models, uh, incorporating audio event detection to improve audio encoder, or further improving the learning strategy to improve the diversity and the quality of generated captions. And also link this with other applications, for example, audio retrieval and source separation with language inquiry. Um, here we have some uh, code available for the uh, development systems. And uh, thank you very much for your listening. I'm happy to take any questions you may have. Uh, welcome back, Wenwu. Uh, thank you for that <laughs> presentation. Uh, once again, deep learning for automated audio captioning. Uh, what a great presentation. And now it's a short time for Q&A. So we've got uh, three questions. Uh, so let's just start right ahead. First question, are there any useful loss functions for unaligned sequences other than Connection is temporal classification. Um, I think in our system, um, we actually uh, the the key is um, you know the uh, how to build the relationship between the audio features and uh, the, the text uh, embeddings. Um, so what we have considered, uh, you know, using for example this uh, binary cross entropy, that's the classical method, but uh, we also considered uh, um, you know other metrics, for example, uh, these uh, using the uh, the reward in the reinforcement learning, where you can directly uh, optimize the uh, cost um, cost function uh, defined based on the performance metrics, like the uh, language, uh, you know, how faithful is to the uh, uh, to the syntactics, uh, for example, in the, in the language. Um, another one is uh, as in the diversity uh, related uh, captioning system, where we try to uh, also capture the naturalist. Uh, you know, the naturalist, uh, we use this uh, discriminator to, to, to find the score, how, how natural it is for the generated captions. And that actually can be uh, used to tell you that. Um, um, how good the, is the quality of the captions? Because uh, in the existing system, this is not um, uh, evaluated, or at least it's not considered in the optimization, optimization process. 
Um, so in terms of the uh, the alignment um, is not so crucial for 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 the captioning system because uh, the key is to capture that information in the in the clip. Um, so for example, the timing, uh, how uh, how precise the, you know in each uh, time frame uh, corresponds to the description that is not so important unless unless we we also have this uh, uh, timing information. Uh, in the uh, language description. Otherwise, it's not so important because we, we want to capture many of the information in the audio clip. Um, how, uh, uh, you know, how the uh, audio events uh, look like and, uh, and or acoustic theme, for example, what type of acoustic theme it is. And we then uh, use this information to generate the description. Um, so in terms of the timing, uh, this, this could be important in the future. We, if we really want to care about uh, uh, that, then we would have to align uh, between the uh, audio and text. Yeah, so I, I hope I roughly answered this question. <laughs> Let's hope so. Uh, OK, so one more question maybe uh, from Eva. Uh, your solution seems to be very complex, multi-stage system. Uh, among applications, you have mentioned assisting hearing impaired people. Uh, would you say that your solution is capable for real-time or relatively real-time inference? For example, I am thinking of some kind of real-time application for deaf to caption uh, for deaf people to caption the surrounding world. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yeah. Um, actually, this is exactly what we're trying to do uh, at the moment. <laughs> the, as you probably noticed, the project is funded by uh, British Council. Uh, it's under the Newton Fund scheme. Um, the, the project title is, uh, audio, uh, is, is uh, audio visual captioning for hearing and uh, visually impaired, not just hearing. So at, uh, one of the aim in the project is to develop a, uh, this a mobile app. Uh, which you know the apps can be installed on the mobile phone where you can take a picture and then you uh, generate the captions and you, you take a, a audio clip you generate uh, captions automatically um, at the moment uh, we have done uh, some work in terms of uh, developing the uh, um, app the apps is mainly developed by the partner in in Turkey actually um, we have already tested the uh, uh, you know, the, the captioning system, uh, it, it works well, actually, uh, we, it, it's not working. Um, I'm not say it's, uh, it's depends on how we define real time, actually. Um, it's, uh, at the moment, I think that processing, uh, uh, for example, if you uh, process one second audio clip, then this is actually quite fast. Uh, you know, when you generate the captions, it, it, it display on the screen instantly. So it's, once you have trained, uh, as long as your uh, mobile phone can, um, uh, you know, can uh, run that, that uh, algorithm. Uh, usually, the smartphone is pretty powerful, and it's not 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 that bad actually. Um, so, mm -hmm. I, it, at the moment, I think it's useful. Of course, the the system could be further um, uh, could be further improved in terms of. Uh, the model size, we could use some uh, advanced techniques to uh, reduce the model size. But, uh, but at the moment, we haven't seen the issue. Um, and also, the uh, objective here is mainly to get everything working and then uh, to generate a very good performance. Um, but that, uh, in terms of the processing speed, um, I think this is something we, we are consider in the future. But uh, in general, I, the, the, the algorithm is processed in, in, I think, relatively real time. It's not real time, but uh, uh, mm -hmm. it's near to real time, I suppose. I understand. Uh, thank you for your answers, Professor. Uh, unfortunately, our time is up. Uh, thank it you. must be a great feeling uh, when uh, your work is actually able to help uh, people in need. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. And I hope to see much. you in the next year, maybe. <laughs>